Hey there, Mac users and Mac automators. This is Bakari Shivanu with Mac Automation Tips. Hey, in this particular video, I'm going to introduce you to an application that very well may reduce the need for constant clicking and clicking and clicking with your mouse and your audio trackpad. So stay tuned and check it out. All right, so the application I'm going to talk about in this video is called Dwell Click, and Dwell Click is put out by uh, Palette Moon, which also brings you the application called uh, Pop Clip. And um, I've done a video on Pop Clip, so you can check that out as well. Um, but this particular utility, what it does is it does automatic clicking for you. And I'm not recommending that you use it all the time because it is it can be very challenging to use uh, because of the automatic clicking. But I want to show you how um, it works and then show you some ways that you can adjust it. And I'll talk about a little bit about how I kind of use it in my regular workflow. My, not my really daily workflow, but my regular workflow. So basically, you can access Dwell Click from the menu bar um, up here. And I can just kind of go... Uh, let me go here and find it here real quickly. So you can access it and enable it by turning it on here, right? And then there's also a little kind of a button that can rest on your desktop in which you can turn it on and off and enable it on and off right here. So when you have it enabled, what it does is, um, you notice that you, you see that it's already doing some clicking there. Uh, basically, it allows you to click without having to click or, you know, with your finger or tap with your finger. So wherever you rest your mouse, um, it will you know, click that, um, that space or that button or whatever. So for example, if I were to go to this tab here, it automatically uh, selected that tab without me having to click. I just rested my mouse over it and did that. Now, by the way, I did an article, I wrote an article about, I don't know, I think a year ago or so about Dwell Click, but I thought I'll also do a video about it as well. So let me show you some examples of when I use it kind of the most. Um, so for example, if I go into my mail, uh, recently I had to um, disable all my rules in mail because I've been having some problems um, with um, my mail client here, with the uh, Apple mail client. And so if I wanted to go back in and when I go back in to enable uh, many of these um, uh, many of these uh, uh, buttons here or, or, or click these click these boxes here, all I have to do is just kind of put the mouse over it and um, and it will automatically uh, select them for me right here. All right. And so that's well click doing that. I'm not clicking. All I'm doing is moving the mouse. And if I want to um, unclick them, do the same thing, okay, and uh, it will happen. So there's many occasions where, you know, so, so like online or in other applications where I have to do a lot of, you know, kind of repetitive clicking. And so I'll turn to, um, you know, dwell click uh, for that particular purpose. Now, it would be nice to be able to use it um, all the time, but I find that sometimes that the clicking happens too fast for me and, and, and it's kind of kind of interrupts my uh, workflow. But let me also show you what you can do when you have it on. You can also uh, do a thing called was dragging here. I didn't click this to drag this window. All I did was basically put it, um, I just put it here um, and um, just kind of rested uh, the cursor there on the, on the uh, toolbar and it automatically uh, drags there. Now, let me show you here how you can control dwell click. I'm going to go over and pull up the uh, dwell click uh, preferences here. And so basically what you need to do when you want to start using dwell click is you have to kind of play around with uh, many of the controls in there to figure, you know, to kind of figure out what works best for you, particularly if you're going to try to use it uh, throughout the day. And and I've tried that for a while and it just didn't quite, you know, get in my workflow. But maybe I again, maybe I need to spend more time with it. But anyway, you can uh, go in here and you can set, you know, how long that um, it would take for the for for the click to occur. Right, so you know, in terms of the click delay, so this says this sets how long the mouse must rest to cause a click. Right, so the longer that you have it, 
um, you know, that might help you to control the clicking, the automatic clicking um, in on applications or, you know, or, or anywhere where your mouse uh, moves to. So that might help as well. Um, you know, I think the default or the way I kind of set it is about here. I don't want it to be too long when I use it. Um, sometimes if I know I'm going to be using it a lot, I may make a shorter uh, delay as well. But I'll put it about right here. All right. Now, another thing is that you can go in. Let me let me come back to that. You can also go into the advanced and you can choose to, um, you know, when whenever the um, the mouse um or the cursor rest, you can, you know, you can choose to have it auto click or not. All right. Um, same thing with the auto dragging. Um, you can just, so, so you see how when I'm moving here, it's automatically dragging there because I rested on in the toolbar. Now, if I rest it right here, I won't get any dragging, but you can disable that as well. And you can also do, uh, you can uh, enable quick drag, which is says start a drag by moving the pointer after an auto click within a time limit. So you can set that to short or long. Um, you can also in, in the adjustments here, you might want to uh, change it. I think it starts out with like 20 pixels. So the jitter distance, this is how much the mouse is allowed to move while waiting to click, which is, I, I put it at 50. You might even put it longer there. That might help you to control it better. Uh, movement distance as well. Um, this sets how far the mouse must move before the clicking again. So you might uh, adjust that as well to say uh, 20 pixels, that kind of thing. All right, and then um, I don't use this too much. I don't use this at all, actually, but you can have a, a floating control panel, which will, um, basically uh, in, um, enable these particular buttons here, uh, the control, command, shift, that kind of thing. And I, there's a reason for that. I think if you're, forget what, I forget why you would want to use that, what, Kate, what uh, uh, situations want to use that, but you can kind of go into, um, there's a, um, uh, 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 a page where there's a that explains a lot of the preferences here that you definitely want to go over if you want to learn how to use uh, dwell click and and apply it there so I mean again I'm not I'm not saying that I'm I'm a total expert of, of using dwell click but it's one of the tools that I have that um, I keep available to me um, when I particularly need it and it's always available in the in the menu bar for me to uh, enable it and, and use it so I don't keep it on all the time but I, I think that it might be something that you know you should use and I don't think it costs that much um, not sure what the cost is actually but you can go check it out on here let's see if we have the cost coming up here uh, I don't see the cost on here for some reason. I mean, it might be free. Um, I've, I've had it for quite a while, so I don't really know that. And then there's also a tutorial that you can do um, that you can try out as well to help you out as well. So you can do that as well. So uh, check it out and see if you like it. Um, it might, again, it might be free or I don't think it costs that much at all. Uh, wouldn't hurt to try it out, particularly if you're into Mac automation. All right, so that's it for this episode of Mac Automation Tips. Hey, let me know if you like this video by clicking that like button below. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe if you because that lets me know that you want more content about Mac automation and Mac productivity. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.